There was a study that was uh, uh, published a, a few years ago. I won't mention who published it, but it was flawed. It was a flawed. It was a study that said ketamine's an opioid. It's like, no, it's not. And the reason they came to that conclusion is because of this um, uh, resensitization of mu receptors. They said, well, gee, if it, re if it resensitizes mu receptors, it must be an opioid. No, it's, it's, it's not. It's just a, a special property where we're able to resensitize mu receptors. And I can tell you, just as a side note, um, we have used ketamine infusions um, uh, to actually lower uh, opioid consumption. We've seen patients go off hundreds of milligrams of morphine equivalents literally overnight without withdrawals and without side effects. Because again, we've resensitized the receptor. It's like rebooting. You know? So when you reboot the tolerance or reboot the sensitivity of that mu receptor, suddenly a patient doesn't need as much. The most, um, uh, I guess the most extreme example that we saw, uh, uh, and this wasn't necessarily with, with mu receptors, this was just disease process. We had a patient who had severe depression. I mean, severe depression, really bad memory, like just, just awful, wasn't able to leave the house, et cetera, et cetera, was on a ton of medications uh, from the psychiatrist. And we did our first ketamine infusion. The patient felt so normal afterwards um, that uh, memory came back. She even remembered details from her wedding that was like 15, 20 years ago uh, that she had forgotten. And she just remembered them on the spot and et cetera, et cetera. It was absolutely fascinating. I, I wish we had videotaped it. It was you know, to the point where you're just like, there's no way. Like you're seeing it with your own eyes, but you can't believe it. But here's, here's why I bring it up. Because that patient became so normal after the infusion, that now we had a, a, another problem at hand, which was even scarier. Now she was on a relative overdose of medications. Because what we had is a patient who literally didn't need medications, and now she's on you know, this, these many. So we had to, we had to have, you know, have her call, you know, call her psychiatrist emergently and sort of say, uh, what do we do here? Because we need to get off everything like overnight. It's a, it, it, it's a good problem, I guess, but a, but a very, uh, you know, there's no textbook for that. Like, how do you do that? There's, there's nothing in the literature that's ever demonstrated stuff like that. Um, so, so we have a molecule that can be very powerful, but you need to, you know, you need to know how to use it. And, and sometimes when your results are very good, you need to know how to quickly respond to that because you may actually reverse certain disease states, uh, you know, almost overnight in some situations. Uh, now, again, all those reversals, if you will, are more, you know, are, are temporary, okay? Nothing is permanent because once the brain has formed neural pathways, you will never unform those. Okay, I, the example I give to the patients is, you know, anyone in here ever been in a bad relationship <laughs> or have a bad experience, right, in business or something like that? Once you've had those, you will never forget those. You might not, it might not affect you on your daily life because you've learned to suppress, you've learned to move on. But if you ever get in that situation again, it will trigger it. And, and, and that anger and those emotions and all that will come right back, right? And, and that's the same thing here. Triggers will happen. Now, you know, triggers could be from pain, it could be from other experiences but triggers will happen. And so patients will usually, you know, at some point, uh, some of those disease processes will come back. Uh, so more mechanisms, uh, we see, uh, uh, again, a lot of subreceptors, a lot of glutamate receptors uh, that, that uh, are affected by ketamine. Uh, Brain-derived neurotropic uh, factor can be uh, um, affected by ketamine. Reduction in cholinergic neuromodulation, uh, L-type, calcium to beta channels. Um, neuro, neurosteroids, increased release of aminergic neuromodulators. Um, and we see, again, norketamine as an active metabolite. So it does have some analgesic effects. Uh, so even after the infusion, so, you know, like even after you, you, you've done uh, uh, treating patients with ketamine, uh, it gets metabolized relatively rapidly. half life's about two and a half hours. You know, the, the, the ketamine itself is out of the patient's system within a day. Right, so norketamine is around, but norketamine also, you know, after just a short time afterwards, has really been metabolized to the point where it's not therapeutic at all. Um, so any effects that you see are effects of, of, you know, kind of putting the fire out with water. The water's not there anymore, but the fire also has been put out. All right. Um, uh, this uh, this 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 uh, slide here really is talking about naloxone, and, and I put this in here just again to to address that study that I just talked about, where uh, you don't see ketamine's effects reversed with uh, naloxone. And ketamine is not an opioid at all. It is it is a unique uh, uh, medication that's an NMDA receptor antagonist. So, in a summary of ketamine's mechanism of action, this kind of shows you all the different things that ketamine is doing. Uh, both in terms of inhibition as well as promotion. So upregulation and downregulation of, of various neurotransmitters.